Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Travel Skills Week here on Adventures with Sarah. Uh, I am your host, as usual, Sarah Murdoch, here with you, uh, along being joined, I can't speak this morning, where's my coffee? Uh, <laughs> being joined this morning by one of, I, I haven't been drinking anything other than coffee, but uh, I'm being joined this morning by one of my favorite people in the whole wide world, uh, the travel file, Trish Feaster. Good morning, darling, how are you? morning to you. My brain feels like what your mouth is doing though. <laughs> Thanks. That's definitely what I feel like. I'm because I'm too, this is going to be too much information for everybody, but so what? We're all friends here, right? So um, the hot flashes, which have been happening for the past, I don't know, four or five years or so in the last couple of days have just been utterly ridiculous. So I'm not sleeping through the night and I feel like I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. And so if I start like doing this during the show, just don't mind me. <laughs> I remember I, I, a tour I did a few years ago. Uh, we had the hot flash zone on the bus because the very front of the bus was super cold because if we didn't keep it super cold, the back of the bus would be too hot. So it was the mm -hmm. only way to kind of keep, regulate that. And so there were a bunch of women who were like, I have hot flashes. I'll sit in the front. <laughs> <laughs> Hot flash zone. I have anyway. every sympathy. <laughs> All right. So we're not going to talk about hot flashes this morning, even if I'm, I'm sure that's an a enthralling conversation we could have. Yeah, it is uh, a good travel tip to talk about, you know, I mean, like, how do you handle this stuff and what do you do? Oh, and funny, right. you don't talk about other stuff. All right. But, but actually that does lead me to one thing. So let me just start, but we're going to back up, back up, back up. Today, Trish and I are going to be talking about our favorite travel tips. Both Trish and I have been guidebook researchers. I've been a guidebook writer and researcher for more than 20 years. Trish has been a guidebook researcher for probably 10 years. 10 years. Yeah. So we've both spent a lot of time traveling professionally and we have learned the hard way many, many things. And so we thought today we would give you some tips that we picked up for our, from our many years on the road. Uh, so that's what we're doing today, just travel tips. And uh, obviously it's going to be women's travel tips. <laughs> Although I'm boom, sure- boom, boom, the, the menopause episode. <laughs> <laughs> well, I didn't expect that, but maybe that's a good idea. So here's my, my travel tip. This actually comes to me from um, my friend, Don Rowe. She brought back uh, from Japan, a little gift basket for my kids of all these cool Japanese things. And she brought us these. And because we're speaking about hot flashes, this is perfect because I saw a woman once who was having hot flashes, who was on a tour with me that had a thing wrapped around her neck all the time like this. And I always thought that was a little odd. Why that's a strange looking scarf. She's like, oh no, no, it's a cool, a cool towel. So this is a cool towel. It just feels like a regular towel, but when you get it wet, it gets cold. Mm -hmm. So this is a great thing if you're going to Southeast Asia, even if you don't have hot flashes, if you get hot easily, if you are a, like Nico is, my son is a, he's a cool weather person. If I take him into anything other over 80 degrees, he starts to melt. So this is a great thing to have. This is a little travel tip for you, a great little thing to add to your bag. If you have, let's say, uh, a, a tr problems regulating your temperature. How about we'll say it that way? That, that's a very good way to put it. And it, uh, I love those because I use them when I go hiking. Um, and I use them not only with the cold water, but because I get sunburned so easily, it acts as another, you know, basically I get to cover my skin. So that's the, that option. But the other really handy thing that I found that was with one of my tour members and it was ridiculously hot. We were in Rome. We had, you know, just basically been marching everywhere. Well, not quite marching, but, you know, just going through the city and, and all the heat's bouncing off of the, the stone walls. And, and it was just wretched, but this girl, she ended up having a major nosebleed. And so I don't mean that you use that to like stop the nosebleed because it's a towel, but like you said, you get it really cold, really wet, and you don't put it on your nose. You put it on the back of your neck regulate that temperature, cool all those points down. So the back of your neck, you get your wrists very, very cold. And then your actual pressure point is right here to stop your nosebleed. You just keep ah. pressing right here. Yeah. And uh, that's stuff I learned the hard way because I used to have major allergy issues that would activate all of that. And I would have nosebleeds all the time too, but that worked like a charm with my tour member. Oh, well, there you go. I, I actually didn't know how to stop the nosebleed. So good to know. 
<laughs> you should be grateful. I mean, you don't have like blood gushing out of your nose. Like that's, it's not an issue that most people have to deal with, but if ever you do right there. Well, I've had people on tours with nosebleeds and every time they do, I'm like, wait, so you go back? No, 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 no. You go mm. forward. No, no, no. I don't know. I don't know. Don't ask me. <laughs> I'm always like, I'm not a doctor. Don't ask me. I don't I like blood. Say, for, for me, actually, I would do two pressure points, wherever the, whatever side the nostril is bleeding. So I'll press there and do uh, pre hold pressure there, right? To stop that. And then also right there. Oh, okay. Good travel okay. tip right there. I know. Strange, strange thing that you just pick up. Yeah. All right. So that, that was my first prop of the day. What's your, what, do you have a prop to show us? A, well, kind of similar to that. Thing? Not that it's something that you wear, but something that I always have handy um, because I, I hate carrying stuff around. I'm not the kind of person who's like, I've got my big backpack day pack and I'm going to go around through the city and I'd look at me and I got my gear. I mean, I'm five foot one. If I put stuff on my back, anyways, I topple over. It's very, very hard for me to Are walk. you really five foot one? Yes, but I can seem like I'm 5'10". I, <laughs> I, I, I have the personality of a person who's 5'10", but- I, 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 know, I know that you're like um, snack size, but I didn't realize that you were like a full foot, more than a foot shorter than me, but yeah, that's okay. Yeah. Fun that's size, also, that's what you are, you're fun size. I am fun size or travel size. Travel size. Yeah, I'm Perfect. travel size, uh, which we can talk about that because I do have, we'll talk shoes in a little bit, but- because I, I don't like carrying that there. And also because I like to be able to adjust my balance. Um, if I'm carrying something on my left shoulder and then I buy something, I need to put it on my right shoulder, that kind of thing. So like most people I have, and you and I, I think have this the same exact one. We do, we have the exact same one. Yeah, and I have 50 million of these because I, I love these designs. This is a brand called Loki um, and they have all the different kinds of little reusable bags but then the other thing that i've started doing because i had all of this material from making the masks that we make so i started i made crossbody bags i have a oh whole, that's cute i have a whole fleet of these that you know just crumple up into nothing they're super sturdy they've got pockets on both sides inside and so that's that's really smart so the, the idea that that she's getting right here that is oh i love that one with the paris that's yeah. really cute yeah um the idea is that that should be on your packing list, in my opinion, uh -huh. or buy one when you get there, a, um, a, a shopping sack, because the other reason is if you go to any grocery store in Europe, they're going to ask you for your shopping bag <laughs> or they're going to ask you to purchase one. And if you go to, I'm thinking Monoprix, um, for example, in Paris, which yeah. is, you know, everybody's favorite shop when you go there, it's basically the target of, of France and it's fantastic. And they sell them there for like a euro. So you yeah. can get a whole bunch of them. They're a great souvenir because they weigh yes. nothing. They cost, you know, not, not hardly anything. And then you could pack them up and then take them home. So you can get 50 of them and, and you're all set for all of your friends when you come home. But the other thing too, is that when you go to a place like that, not only do you need to have your bag, you pack your own bag, right? So people always yeah. forget about that. You're like standing, well, who's, where's my little grocer's helper to put this stuff in my bag like no you're doing it yourself yeah you and if you don't bag. have a bag you'll have to purchase one and either you have to purchase like a thick plastic one that they charge you 50 cents for or you spend the euro and you get the little thing i get i have a bunch from carrefour and i have a bunch mm -hmm. from uh the casino in uh yeah. yep. i have yeah it, it's kind of fun too because now when i go shopping i'm like i like flip through my wardrobe of shopping bags but the little one you have there you is a yeah you have one that's more like a, a shouldery one not rather than just a carry like this and i like that Correct. too that's a really nice one so if you have one you can actually put on your shoulder and also doesn't look really stupid is mm -hmm. nice that, and, and that's nice. monoprix has always has like great fashion design even though it's based supposed to be something very functional you know it's french so they have one that has like peacock feathers on it and they have another one that has you know emblems of, of France or whatever. It's always fun. Man, I miss our uh, July shopping sprees at Monoprix because yes. everything is on sale and we have so much fun going and like dumpster diving into their clothes. That's so much fun. Man. It is crazy, like down to 75% off. I'm just like riding the racks looking for the blue dot or whatever the, the color dot that goes with that. 
Yeah, and I usually cycle through France at least a couple of times in July. And so it's like the first pass, I look for the things that I know are, are going to be gone when I come back. And then you look for the stuff that you know is going to be, it's going to go from 50% to 80% when yeah. you come back two weeks later, because they progressively mark stuff down throughout yeah. July. <laughs> oh, France sale week. That's so much fun. That's a good tip, by the way. Mm -hmm. uh, that's a good travel tip to let people know. If you are a shopper, I know not everybody is, but if you are a shopper, just don't bring anything with you when you go in July because everything's on sale in Europe in July and it is a hoot to go shopping. I bought some beautiful clothes I could have never afforded otherwise at mm -hmm. shops in Paris and also Italy too. I mean, it's all over Europe. Their, their sale months are January and July. So if you're traveling in January and July, bring fewer things and just plan to, to purchase stuff there. Right. And those are, those are like government mandated things. You can't officially have a sale any other time of the year. You can have what's called reductions, but you can't have the sales except for in January and July. But yeah. um, I'm seeing a bunch of questions and comments coming up. God bless you, Melanie. I will try Estrovin. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna over the counter. That's what I need. Um, and then Jerry. Hi, Jerry. I, I guess we don't know each other. Hi, Jerry Kurt. Nice to meet you. I'm Trish Feaster. I'm the travel file. I'm a tour guide and a guidebook researcher. I run my company, The Travel File, and also I'm the managing editor for, editor for Guide Collective. So that's what I do and uh, take care of my family. All kinds of fun things. Hi, Barbara. Hi, Akash. Hi, Jean. And hi again, Jerry. And Aldi. All, Jerry brings up Aldi. We have Aldi now where I live, which is- I don't have Aldi. You don't? There's none in Seattle at all? I don't leave my house, darling, so I don't know. Okay. <laughs> if it's not within two miles of Green Lake, I have no idea. <laughs> Ours came in right right when COVID was starting, and um, it's been it's been good. They're you know it's a German based company, uh, and they have really really great prices on stuff. I mean, some some things that are the the one off brands that are meant to be the knockoffs of Doritos or whatever. You know, some, oh, some it's like thing. Lidl. Is yes. it like Lidl? Yes. Oh, yeah. yeah you know. I've never gotten into Lidl. I, you, okay, so here's a funny thing. So Lidl has opened all over Italy, right? So, and sometimes they open them in places in Italy that there is no other like grocery store. Like I'm, I'm thinking Palermo, there's a Lidl right in the middle of town, it's super convenient. I think their stuff is kind of, I, I guess I'm judging them by their wine selection and their wine is garbage. So maybe I'm just being too harsh, but. Uh, yeah, judge it on other things. Don't judge it on wine. Yeah, because their wine is is you know in a land of wonderful wine they sell garbage. But um, the thing that's crazy is that they sell tennis shoes occasionally, little tennis shoes that are in that crazy color scheme: the bright blue, the bright yellow, the bright red. They only come out like once a year, and they sell out, and then they're on eBay for like five hundred euros. Oh, oh they're the God. ugliest tennis shoes I've ever seen. But Italian teenagers are crazy about them. <laughs> <laughs> what a weird go. thing, huh? Pro tip, um, <laughs> buy cheap shoes at Lidl and make billions on eBay. Well, and that, but my tip, I guess that uh, that's a long-winded story to say. One of my tips is go walk around grocery stores everywhere you go. I love my walking favorite around. thing to do. It yeah, really, really is. You can find all kinds of really cool stuff. In fact, in fact, I was just, uh, not that you need to you know my, my morning rituals or whatever, but I was just using a product from Monopri uh, there lavender soap. I, I took a bunch home. Like I, I bought 10 of them because I just love it so much, you know, and it cost next to nothing. I buy, when I'm in Italy, I load up on spray deodorant because mm. I just have a thing. I don't like touching my underarms. So they have these wonderful pump, not aerosol, but pump spray deodorants that they, you can't buy them here. It just doesn't exist in the United States. I don't know why, but they're great and they work super well. And both of my kids prefer them to like a stick deodorant. Mm -hmm. So I load up when I'm there. I And it just looks like a little spray pump bottle and they're, you know, not that expensive, but they last a long time. So I we, we kind of talked about this almost a year ago um, we, when we did a little coffee chat because um, I don't mind touching my armpit. I hate when other people touch my armpits. Don't do that. I will kick you where the sun don't shine. But I don't mind like if I have to do that or whatever. And I, I told you about this deodorant. Do you remember I haven't that? tried it, but I keep you getting ads to. for it on Facebook now. Because <laughs> your your phone listens to you. I <laughs> know. To both of us. But Super and they creepy. do they do have a stick form, but it's called Lumi. And I like it because I also like you, 
when I travel, I want to reduce the amount of stuff that I'm bringing with me, right? So I transfer yeah. things into smaller containers. I have like, I was going to show you one, um, all kinds of like little little things to, to hold stuff. So this, this size container, which holds maybe half an ounce of anything, right? So this one happens to be my face powder, but I'll use exactly this size. So you yeah. can see it, that size. Um, and I'll transfer this into there. And that lasts me, putting that, that amount in here, so half an ounce, um, will last me eight weeks. Because you Holy need cow. minimal amount. Yeah. You need yeah. minimal amount. You take a, half of a size of a pea and then rub that between your two fingers, put that on your pits, you're good to go. And it works like a charm. I love this stuff so much. I, I really thing you wish they would sponsor me for something, but that's not the case. <laughs> I'm well, making no money off of this. You can always ask. I uh, there's a bunch of products I'm sure if I asked I could get sponsored by because I there's just certain things I love. The other really good travel tip that um, that you just reminded me of is using contact lens cases. Similarly, mm -hmm. so you, uh, in one half you could put your deodorant paste, and the other half you could put in like your favorite face cream or something like that, and that'll really uh, reduce, right? Uh, yes, absolutely. And anything where you can do that because you don't need. I mean, obviously you don't need a full bottle of shampoo. That's why you have those travel size ones, but you don't need your full thing of foundation. You don't need your full thing of, I don't know, whatever it is. So you can, you can minimize that and make it easier on yourself. And not everybody, I understand, not everybody is traveling for eight weeks at a time, but even if you're traveling for 10 days, a week or whatever. Yeah. So then do you really need to carry all of that stuff for just seven days? No, make it easier on yourself. And the other thing then is that when you do minimize like that, that puts you in that category of likely having just a carry on, right? Not yes. having to check your luggage because you have fewer things and it makes it a breeze. I'm, I, it is on a rare, really, really, really rare occasion now that I ever check my luggage because I can't, I cannot handle the inconvenience if, what if my luggage got lost or it got sent to wherever and I don't have it for two weeks because they can't find me. I can't. Yeah, I, I never check it actually. And the, you know, the real master lightweight packer in my family is my youngest son because he just doesn't bring anything. I mean, he's a little boy, so he doesn't need makeup or anything like that. But one of the things that I realized is he never brings shampoo and you don't need to. <laughs> it just never occurred to me. He's completely right. You don't need to bring shampoo because unless you're staying in a hostel, there's always shampoo in yeah. every hotel you're ever going to stay in. So there's a bunch of stuff you can always just not choose not to bring. So shampoo's one. There's always like lotion in every yeah. hotel room that I think I've ever stayed in. And there's always soap. So those are three things that you can actually just leave out of your kit. Because I mean, as long as you're staying in hotels. Um, so that, so and that's my, my other big uh, thing that I ended up doing because of our Vietnam trips. So the one that we took, God, now was it three years ago? Two, two, or no. three, two years ago. Was it? Two I years ago. It was two years ago. Yeah. You what came I, with me to Vietnam two years ago. Yeah. Yeah. And right. then I did one last year and then one, wait. No, you did. Oh, yeah. You, you yeah, came with me year, as a guest two years ago and then you did one this and last year. And then I did one in 2020. 2020. Yeah. But what I started doing was, um, you know, one, one of the, the, most inconvenient things when you're traveling, especially if you're having to use public toilets or whatever, anything like that. One, there's not always toilet paper, right? So we know, I always bring a little pack of Kleenex with me, no matter what, because that's my emergency stash. If something goes sideways and I'm like, oh, there's no toilet paper here, but thank goodness I've got my Kleenex. But the other thing that I started doing was I, I take the little soap, um, like liquid soap, hand soap, body wash, whatever that's in the hotel, and I stick that in my purse and I carry that with me all day because more often than not, you're going to encounter a bathroom that has no soap at all. Yep. All, ac all across Europe, all across Asia, wherever you're going to go, that's going to happen to you at some point. And I think that's just absolutely disgusting. And I know people use the hand sanitizer, but you know, that's just, that's not going to cut it. So I always have some kind of little bottle of soap in my purse, my day bag with me all the time. And I would just piggyback on that by saying that uh, hand sanitizer is a false friend. 
uh, I think too many people travel with hand sanitizer and they feel that it's a substitute for washing hands. And it definitely is not a substitute for washing hands. Like you, sh you can't just keep piling it on like you're frosting a cake because by the end of the day, like your hands are gonna be in like sticky gloves and you have to wash because washing is more effective and also just gross. I find that people use too much hand sanitizer okay. as well. They'll put a big like, toothpaste size yeah. blop and then their hands are wet. It's supposed to be just like a tiny, tiny, tiny bit and you do this until it's gone, right? What I do use it for though, and I do pack it with me is I clean off the airplane, like the table, anything that I would be touching like that. So I just take a little napkin and wipe that all down. Yeah, well, and I think that maybe that won't be such a problem going forward. That's one of the hidden blessings of the pandemic is airplanes are actually clean now. <laughs> well, no, but you're right. And I, I think the air circulation yeah. systems are incredible. What I don't trust is this snotty kid who was going like this and had sit, sat in my seat before I got there and nobody wiped that down. That's what- But I think they are though. I mean, I don't know, but when I flew in the fall to Amsterdam, Oh my goodness, like everything was clean. Like they clearly had gone even into the pockets behind wow. the seat and sanitized. I've never seen a plane that clean before. Who knows if it'll last? It probably won't last. It's probably too much work for the airplane airlines to continue to do that. But it kind of made me think, well, if you guys can do that now, you could have been doing it all along. <laughs> It's the same thing with the air filters. They're like new and improved air filters, you know, reduce 99% of like disease transmission on airlines. And I'm like, well, why did you not do that like a decade ago? Right. Yeah. And what have you been doing? <laughs> yeah, seriously. I don't know. I asked the question actually recently on um, the mm -hmm. Adventures with Sarah travel community forum. Like, what do you guys think about wearing masks past the pandemic? And personally, I'm going to wear a mask on an airplane, I think, from now on. Mm -hmm. I, I have had almost no colds or anything like that. We didn't get sick at all. I mean, I know we don't we didn't leave the house very much, but I think on airplanes, I mean, it's really common in Asia to do that. People just do yeah. that as a courtesy, whether there's a pandemic or not. And I right. think I'm going to just start packing a mask too. What is your, what are your feelings about well, that? I, and I'm glad you brought that up. And there was a really good article in the New York Times about that just, I think, two days ago, <clears throat> if not yesterday. And it was, they had interviewed people who had said, you know, this is why I'm going to continue wearing the mask. And you know, because of my personal health reasons, I had COVID, this is why, or whatever, or I'm just not, I'm not, I'm not confident enough about this and I'll keep doing this for however long. And then they did talk about how in Asian countries since SARS, right? So yeah. what is that? 10, 10 years? I don't know, however many years it's been, but it's quite a long time that, that yeah. Asian people have been doing that. And it isn't, a, a stigma kind of thing. It is for it was for us when we started seeing it. I mean, when I started yeah. seeing Asian travelers in Europe who were doing that, I have to admit that I was, you know, well, let me, what are you doing? Like, it's perfectly fine. You don't need to do that. But what I wasn't taking into consideration, very selfish on my part, was maybe that person is just being courteous to somebody else. Maybe they don't feel all that well, and they're trying to block whatever they have going on. And so I, there isn't that kind of um, politicization that happens to seeing, you know, well, it's, it, it's just a matter of health, right? It's a matter of science. It's a matter of not transmitting something because you've blocked it or not receiving something because you've put another barrier on it. And it's just like, that's what it is. And so for me too, I think I'm, a long, I'm in the same camp with you about probably wearing it while I'm um, on the plane because that, yeah. that just kind of wigs me out. Um, I don't know how long I'll keep doing it after after all of this kind of starts to settle down, but I know that I'll be wearing it longer than a lot of other people. Yeah, I think that that just might be in my bag from now on, mm -hmm. especially because sometimes you just get into an environment where you're in super close contact with other people, whether that's like maybe a crowded bus in Rome or whether that's an airplane or whatever. I think that that's, it's not a bad thing just to have, it doesn't weigh anything, just stick one in your bag. And if you feel the need to wear it, like that would be, and especially traveling in the winter time, I think that would be really smart in the winter time to do. Yeah. So, so a cu couple of questions that are coming up. So I just want to look at those again. Um, just basic questions going back. So Flo was asking about how do you spell monoprix? It's M O N O P R I X. So one price, monoprix, 
is the name of that store. And again, you can find it in any town, practically any village in France, and it's just the best place ever. Barbara wants to know, how heavy is your luggage when you come home? Ha ha ha. Yes, mine is heavy. <laughs> <laughs> and I have been known to buy an extra luggage, an extra suitcase. It's happened. I, yeah, I would recommend Four always the, the, the whole packing light philosophy that I talk about. And I'm going to do, by the way, for those of you watching the, that classic packing talk that y'all love, I'm going to reboot that on, on Saturday morning. So if you want to do a little packing clinic with me, that that's what's going to be um, happening on Saturday here. Um, I always bring over as light a bag as I possibly can. Mm -hmm. So I try really hard to stick maybe to 15 pounds, which I know is pretty light, but that means I have room in my bag to be able to bring other stuff home with me. And yeah, my bag, when I go home, I don't care about how heavy it is because I check it on the way home because right. who cares when it arrives? Well, it'll arrive when it'll arrive. Yeah. For me, what overloads my bag on the way home is wine and olive oil and cheese and like all the good foods, food items yeah. that I can't easily get here. So yeah, my bag probably weighs 50 pounds when I go home. And then, you know, we've talked about this too, is that packing is all about math, right? So obviously in weighing stuff, and you and I are pretty militant about weighing everything that goes into our suitcase, right? I mean, I, I do that even with my toiletries, like every, everything has to earn its spot if you're going to be in there, because if I've got to carry you around, I better totally need you or, you know, it, it, it makes sense to have you on that trip. But the other thing too, is to think about the, the mathematics of your actual clothing, right? So if you have seven tops and four bottoms, how many outfits do you have minimum? Seven tops and four bottoms. Mm -hmm. That's exponential, isn't it? <clears throat> Well, you have a minimum of, of 28, right? Yeah. If you just yeah. do top bottom, if you layer, then it's a totally yeah. different combination. So 28 outfits out of seven tops and four bottoms, but people are packing for like two outfits a day. And, you know, and I need this just in case. And what if we go to a formal thing and you know, like, you don't necessarily need all this stuff. You can make it happen if you are smart and selective about what you bring. Yeah, well, and I, I that's something I've always um, tried to kind of communicate to people who are learning how to pack is um, it's really important to, sorry, my, that's my child. Um, it's really important to think about a palette when you pack. So, you know, when I, what I do is I lay out all of my pants and I lay out in, in a row, like kind of one, two, three, four, and then I'll take all of my tops and I'll lay them out kind of on top of that, like I'm fanning out a color chart. You know how like at the paint store, there's the paint chips and you fan them yeah. out. I do that with my clothes. And then I just look, does every single pair of pants match every top? And the best way to do that is by choosing a palette and uh, like a painter. So for me, I think that there are kind of three different palettes that I choose from. Black and white with a bold color, black, white, red, for example. So everything is either black, white, red, or something that goes in that sort of zone. Another one is like browns, like you have beige pants, brown shoes, you know, stuff like that. And then one color for pop, like maybe a blue or something like that. And then the, the third color way that I actually really like is very light colors um, for the summertime. So um, really light beige, white. I know that maybe that's stupid to travel with, the, with colors like that if you're sloppy like I am. So if I'm going to Italy, I won't do that because the tomato sauce will be all over me. But places like Morocco, for example, I, I go with a lighter kind of scheme. But, you know, choose three colors that kind of match and make sure all of the color, all the pieces that you've chosen are one of those three colors. And that's a really easy way, I think, to, uh, to make a palette and then everything goes together. A mm -hmm. um, couple of other questions that came up. Um, Barbara wanted to know where I get those containers. I got them at what is that place in Alderwood Mall or just outside of Alderwood Mall? Dyson? It's not the container. No, not the container store, but like. It's not Daiso? No, but it's like the, any, any kind of like container store, containers, et cetera, whatever. Anybody's going to have that. And of course, Amazon is going to have all of those little kinds of things. So that's, that's just where I pick them up, Barbara. And Victoria says, for me at the grocery, it's, um, Bio Presto, Italian version of wool light, but much better. It takes out any spot. I never leave Italy with without a bottle. Okay, 
very good to know. I'm going to keep that one in mind. Um, Jerry likes the individual stores, cafes, pizzerias in Italy, uh, believe it or not. Esalunga, oops, where'd that go? Esalunga, it's so much fun to explore. I agree with Sarah that you can find many things there that you can't find here, especially smaller sizes. Yes, actually, there was one place when I was in Salzburg and it was like a Lidl or something like that. It wasn't exactly them, but it was some, some off-brand like that. And their travel size section was amazing. It was like an entire wall. It was, it was like the paradise of travel section. And I, 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 want, I want to go back. Salzburg. There's also exactly things at grocery is. stores that maybe like you, you wouldn't think about browsing, but you'll find some interesting things. The other thing that I bring back sometimes, which this is just a weird thing that I discovered in Europe, uh, they have laundry detergent for black clothing, which yeah. is, yeah, I don't, I don't know that I've seen that in the U.S. Maybe they have it in the U.S., but it's something in Italy that's very, very common. You get a special laundry detergent that'll keep your black clothes black, which I think is so very Italian. <laughs> it is. But I mean, you got to look at, keep it looking sharp. You know, when it starts getting that like fady kind of look and it's been yeah. sad and. Yeah, I, I know. That. And I, yeah, I just bought some wonderful pants from Athleta that I just love black pants. And at the first wash, they look like they're a hundred years old. So I'm like, I'm getting me some Omni Bianco next time I go yeah. to Italy and that'll just fix that right up. So um, one other washing uh, tip that I have is that it, Again, my phone listens to me apparently because mm -hmm. I think on Instagram, I, I saw some company that was selling uh, washing machine sheets. Uh, so I bought some because I was curious about this and they are really small. They're only this big. Okay, so can, I was gonna get suckered into that too. So you-, you I got them? suckered into it. Okay. Yes, and they're great. And so all it is, and they're, I thought, well, this would be fantastic for when I travel because they're for a washing machine and you just use one square this big for a whole load, which is mm -hmm. crazy, but I'm trying to get away from using so many plastics. I mean, whatever I can do. So that's why I wanted to try it. I just don't like all the plastic waste, mm -hmm. uh, but they're perfect for travel too, because yeah. you can put a few into a Ziploc baggie. And then when you're washing, if you wanna wash your clothes in the sink of your hotel room, or I think it's always a big problem when I go to a laundry place abroad because I sometimes there's no detergent and then you have to go to the grocery store. And especially if you're renting an apartment and you've got a laundry machine, you have to go and buy a huge box yeah. of laundry soap, which you're never gonna use all of. And you just wasted six euros because you can't get a smaller, you know, whatever. So mm -hmm. anyway, that's my hot tip for today buy those little laundry sheets that are tiny, take three or four with you, and then you're ready to go. I'm so glad that you tried those because I am I am really exactly the person who an infomercial, infomercial is designed for. Like that's just, you know. Me too. I'm Gen well, X, I'm a latchkey kid. That's what I watched, that and AMC movie classics. You know, that, that was my entire upbringing, infomercials and AMC. Well, it's pretty sad. Well, not sad, but also creepy about how um, your phone can very much predict what it is that will appeal to you. But on the other hand, it's good because that's a product that I was really happy to find and use. So good and bad. But yeah, um, I've also seen, by the way, uh, little tiny sheets. I got them, them from Lewis and Clark, which is a, a very inexpensive travel brand um, that were, again, the tiny little sheets of soap and not for yeah. washing, but for like hand soap. Hand soap which I thought was really good too. The only problem is you really got to keep them in a Ziploc bag. They come in a little case, but put them in a Ziploc bag because if any moisture gets in there, yeah, <laughs> it's all over. So, <laughs> it's a good idea. Um, a couple more questions that come in. Jerry is asking, am I from Vietnam? No, I'm from California. My parents are from the Philippines, but I am born in San Diego, California. In fact, I just wrote an article about it. So you can check that out pretty soon. Um, and Joyce Jones jumped in there and she let him know that's good. Our colleague William is here. You can both always have cool new masks. I know two people. <laughs> yes, you're right. I, I will never be without a mask because I make them and so does Sarah. So we've got all kinds, we'll, we'll never run out. Uh, hey, Michelle is here. <laughs> Yeah, Michelle knows my secret is that I buy musical instruments when I'm on the road too. So we were in Cambodia right. together because <laughs> we were in Cambodia and we were at Angkor Wat and there was somebody playing a, a string instrument, right? So it's, it's two strings, two wires, and the person was making beautiful music and doing all kinds of stuff, doing like 
classical stuff, was doing contemporary pop kind of things, but all on this two string instrument. And I got suckered in and I bought one. How did <laughs> you when get I that played, home? Um, you know, it was very skinny. So it's only two strings. So the, the width of the, I don't even know what it's called, but whatever the, the bar thing, the wood thing, I don't, play, obviously I don't play string instruments, um, is maybe that wide. And then okay. the, the, the resonant portion, you know, where you would actually play and then you have that reverberation was probably like this big in diameter. And the total length was maybe, I don't know, two and a half feet. So I just stuck that in my big work bag with the little nubbin sticking out and, and it worked just fine. But when I play, it sounds like. <laughs> and I'm sure your husband enjoys fun. that. <laughs> yeah, my husband, my husband who teaches music and leads the orchestra and all of that stuff. Yeah. He's like, stop doing that. Just it's for decoration. Just put it down. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's like me and my Cambodian shadow puppets. I had to buy shadow puppets because oh, they were so did? cool, but I'm never going to become a, a puppeteer. Yeah. The shadow puppets in the, in Cambodia are, that's just a traditional form of art. Yeah. And they do these puppet shows. They're so beautiful. So I, you know, it's a nice decoration, but I don't plan on becoming a puppeteer. So that's okay too. But that leads me to an interesting question. Um, taking home souvenirs that don't weigh a lot. Mm -hmm. um, I personally really like to bring home really interesting pieces of jewelry. As you can tell, I've always got an interesting necklace on. And yeah, we have matching ones, actually. We both have our St. Christopher's medals. Um, so that's just one of my tips is if you're looking for good stuff to bring home, um, I always recommend uh, just scarves that are lightweight for friends or little tiny pieces of jewelry, it's everything handmade. I personally recommend doing handmade kind of stuff. Do you have any things that you like to take home if people want to stay under the weight limit going back? Um, yeah, same kind of thing. So I will do jewelry for friends and family. The scarves are an easy thing, you know, and people, people really like those. Um, but I also do coffee. So just, oh. just the smaller, you know, smaller bags of um, vacuum sealed coffee and I, I take those home. Those are nice, nice little gifts. Yeah, I load those up for myself. Because <laughs> <laughs> the coffee, well, I mean, my favorite coffee is, uh, I like to buy the Lavazzo when I'm in Italy. Yes. And here, if I buy it at like Fred Meyer, it's $15 a bag, but mm -hmm. at, you know, the regular Carrefour or whatever in Sicily, I can buy it for three euros, the same coffee, so. It's just good uh, to know what's what's expensive here and cheap there, you know. I also like doing like little cookies or crackers that are unusual or, you know, just that you couldn't couldn't find around here. And there's one called um, uh, Principe or Principe that is really yummy and it has a blue package and it's basically just shortbread with chocolate around it. And I love those. And then there's another one that's also similar also a shortbread cookie and it's enrobed in chocolate and it's called Filipinos. So I buy that just because Filipinos. <laughs> you know, just a ran random thought, you know, it's super weird. The other day when a picture of you popped up on Facebook in my notifications. It did? It, well, no, no. I looked at my notifications and it was something like Trish Feaster, blah, 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 travel uh -huh. file. I think you were live or something. The notification under that was my sister. And it said, my sister added new pictures to her Facebook page. You guys look exactly the same. <laughs> you guys seriously, like she's, she looks, yeah, you guys look the same. So. Well, and your mom is basically my mom. Yeah. Anyway, our I mean, moms like, they're the both, same. they're both like this. And if, if, if any of you know, Sarah is what, six foot two, two. Her yeah. mom is five foot zero, two, nothing. maybe five zero. My mom is five. She says she's five feet, but she's four eleven and thinking. Yeah, we basically have the same mom. <laughs> yeah, they're adorable. They're totally adorable. Okay, Barbara wants to know uh, about: Do we wear layers of heavy stuff on the plane with stuff in your pockets, or is that just tacky? Um, no, I don't. I mean, I don't think that's tacky. It's a, it is definitely a way of getting around. You know putting stuff in your bag. Yes, my jacket, uh, it depends. It depends on which jacket I'm bringing. It depends on the season of the year because I do have like degrees of puffy puffiness for my coats and all of that. And having lived in Seattle, I own more coats now than I've ever owned in my entire life combined because that it was just what I did. So all I did, I have literally closets full of coats. Um, 
and I have different layers of them. So I have like my windbreaker, which I can just, you know, crumple up and put in a thing or whatever. Um, I have my little like waist cropper jacket and then I have the long one. So I bring all of that stuff with me and I will tend to use, if I have my big coat, I use that as a blanket. So that's my, I, I do physically carry it on. I just drape it over my arm. And then when I get in my seat, I kind of cocoon myself in that. It's like having a sleeping bag and, and I'm just all cozy. And then the I, other thing that I do is with my smaller jacket, I use, this is, this is not the right size, but you know, just one of these kind of bags, just a, like a packing bag, whatever. This is made out of nylon ripstop, but slightly bigger than this. Um, I will fold that up put it in there and then that's my pillow. So I don't, I don't bring a travel pillow. Um, I use, that. I bring my full size pillow because I don't know how you do that. It's a down pillow though. So I bring a down pillow and what I do is I put it into um, one of those pillow covers that has a zip on top. Yeah. And um, I always like have the kids decorate it with markers and stuff. So I won't leave it behind in the hotel. I'll remember and I will, I'll see it on the bed. But um, when you take a down pillow, you can squish it down to nothing and it really doesn't weigh much. And then when, you, when I get on the plane, I fluff it up real good. And uh, then I have a full pillow because I don't know, that's just important to me. But everybody has their, their thing that's important to them. Uh, and to the question of what do we wear on the plane, I am crazy about layers. I run really cold, like I'm always cold all the time. Like this Seattle's the worst place in the world I could possibly live because I'm cold pretty much 11 months a year. There's maybe three or four weeks a year when I'm not cold. So when I get on a plane, I'll usually have on a tank top and I like, um, like I have an Eileen Fisher one that's made of silk. So a mm. tank top that actually yeah. retains some heat. So I'll wear that. Then I'll wear maybe a long sleeve t-shirt over the top of that. And then I'll put a cashmere sweater over the top of that. Uh, Cause that's, those are just all layers that retain a lot of heat. Uh, also when you wear multiple super thin, but warm layers, you're not putting those in your suitcase. So it's actually lightening right. up your suitcase and allowing you to kind of stick to your weight. Um, I have been known on some flights to put really thin leggings underneath a pair of more drapey pants just to keep myself extra warm. Cause like I said, I always get very, very cold. And then the jacket is the hard part because like, for example, when I go to Croatia next week, I don't want to bring my puffy jacket because that's not something I'm going to use once no. I get there. So that's a real tricky one. So I would probably say if you're going in the summertime, layering and putting a sweater, like maybe two or Wait. three layers plus a sweater. And then, uh, I, I got exactly the thing. And for the ladies, this is a nice thing because Nordstrom always has them on sale or you can get them at Nordstrom rack or whatever. Right. So getting, doing like a shawl and mm -hmm. it's hard, very hard to see, but doing that. And then again, folding it up, packing it in. And then I use that as my pillow. Or yeah, I've seen, I've seen travel wraps before that some people like. The only thing about those though, I find is that, cause I tried something like that once is then the rest of the trip you're dragging around something that you don't necessarily need. Oh no, so, no, no, I always use it. When I go out at night, that's the thing that dresses up my outfit. So I can be wearing a, you know, a decent tank top and a pair of jeans. And I put that shawl on and suddenly it's like glamor. <laughs> <laughs> and then you just walk around like this. But you do that anyways. Well, I do. <laughs> I gotta admit that. One other little packing tip I give you is that traveling with kids, um, I put blankets into my, really lightweight, fluffy blankets into my kids' bags, even if it took up a little extra weight when we went on long trips when they were littler. And that was really nice because number one, on the airplane, that's great to have your own blanket. Number two, a lot of uh, hotels in the summertime over air condition their rooms and it's really hard to turn down the air conditioning and they have really thin like in Italy you know how Italy never has a thick bed cover it's always like a tablecloth that's on your bed in, in the summertime so I like to have a, a blanket like that so that was nice for the kids it was very comforting for them the new thing that I got was when I was in Vietnam. So Michelle, I know you're watching and I don't know if you guys found anything like this when you were in Thailand, Sarah, with Michelle. Um, but in Vietnam, they, uh, like on any street, you're gonna find these little shops, not only where they sell clothing, but they, they always talk about their silk, right? So they've got little silk, essentially sleeping bags, which is just, it's the width of a sleeping bag, but it's just, like a sat sateen kind of silk type of thing. And you can put yourself in it 
You can use that as a blanket, you could use it as a sleeping bag, but it worked great when we were doing the, the overnight train travel. And then I found that it was so comfortable and so soft and so cozy that I was using it at every hotel that I was going into. Yeah, that's a really good tip. Uh, there's a, a comment. Uh, what do we think about this new article that came out about weighing passengers before they get on an airplane? I just think that's a bunch of garbage because you are, you're not getting me on a scale. Like, I'm sorry, that's never going to happen. And I think that every single woman in the United States would say the same thing. Don't you think? I, I think it's just wrong. I can't even believe that this is a, a, a thing that's being considered like that. That just should not happen. No, no. And, and it's discriminatory. And what are they going to do? Are they going to, if you weigh too much, are they going to move you to a different part of the plane to balance out the weight or something? I, I cannot see that would be, in my opinion, would go against so many discrimination laws. I just can't, I can't imagine that that would ever go anywhere. So I read that too the other day and I just laughed when I saw it. I'm like, okay, well, that goes in the file with the time that Ryanair tried to de develop standing room only airplanes. Do you, did you ever hear about that? No. No? Yeah, Ryanair was trying to develop standing room only planes where you'd sit on basically like a bicycle seat and you'd stand and they would strap you in standing. So does, that, that just makes me wonder, does, do the Ryanair executives just sit around and go, what can we do to remove all dignity from humanity? Go. <laughs> oh, the other hey. good one was pay bathrooms, right? And you're trying no, to I put, remember that. that pay bathrooms. Thing. Yeah. So yeah. Right. I have to say, I, you got to love to hate them. That's the, the problem with them is that they, yeah, they have their place. Cheap, but it, and, and if you can, if you can game the system with them, right? Like, you, you do your early check-in so that you're not checking in at the airport counter because that's an extra $50 if you do that. And if you just like wear all of your clothes. That's what I've done. <laughs> I, I did that. Did I not tell you? I literally did that once. I was I went to, to check into my flight and they were like, oh, your bag is over by two ounces. I mean, it was something stupid. And I'm like, we'll see about that. I actually done this twice. I went into the bathroom in the airport in Palermo and I put everything on. I put on like six shirts and two sweaters, three pairs of socks, three pairs of pants, put on my coat and stuffed every single pocket of my coat with shoes. I had shoe, a pair of shoes, my toiletries kit in the other pocket. So the moral of the story is when you go to buy a travel coat, make sure it's got big pockets. There you go. There you go. Oh, I also took a pair of pants because I needed to just economize a little bit more. I took a pair of pants, rolled it into like a, a roll and stuffed it down the back of my pants. So I just looked like I had a big butt and it worked. I got on that plane and I did not give them an extra dime. <laughs> were, you, were you getting extra looks like, hey now? <laughs> <laughs> it just looks like I'd eaten an awful lot of pizza while I was in Palermo. <laughs> okay. One other little fun thing that I don't know if you bring these, but um, little carabiners. I have those. I've never brought them. What do you use them for? everything. I clip yeah. all kinds of stuff to my bag. So like, um, you know, if I'm, if I'm carrying extra groceries, and it's too hard on my shoulders, then I'll clip that onto the another bag that I'm already holding. Like that's a yeah. crossbody bag. Um, any kind of thing, like even just if I have whatever keys or some kind of something, I'll always clip stuff. And that's a good idea. Thing. Yeah, I love them. I, and I have several of them, like I'll have two, two on one side of my bag and clip different things. And then it's easy for me to get to. That's a really good idea. I think I I had a carabiner I brought one year because I had a metal um, mug that I was carrying because I, I brought a like heater to make coffee for myself in the morning. So that that I clipped it to my bag that way. The other thing that reminds me of is twist ties. Yeah. When you get those little twist ties with the metal in them, which you don't get those, I don't think as much as you used to, but mm -hmm. when I do see them on any kind of product that I get, I, I hoard twist ties because yeah. those can come in handy for a million weird things, whether it's like you're, you know, you're check. I like if I have to check a bag, I'll take a twist tie and that's how I'll secure the zippers because, you know, if TSA is going to get in, TSA is going to get in, but it keeps it from opening on its own, you know. And then um, along that line, that's why I always bring extra hair ties. Um, same kind of thing, because you can, you can use those to, to cinch up all manner of stuff. And then the other thing I use are the, um, like the paper clips that are this kind, you know, when you fold over like that. Um, and what I do is I put my earbuds 
like I, I, I loop them around my hand, I'll, like if I did this, right? So I'll do that and I'll secure it. And yeah. then I put it in between there so it holds. So you don't oh. actually clip the wire, but you clip it in between this thing. And then because it has this, oh, look, that's my carabiner. Oh, and then I can that. always find it because I'm always digging through my bag, like where the heck did I put this? And it's just right there. Hmm. So one other thing I wanted to, to ask you about what your strategy is, is that um, when I started researching guidebooks 20 years ago, I very much remember my first day on the job. I'd walked 15 miles in Rome mm -hmm. doing all this stuff, and my feet felt like they were on fire when I got back. My feet hurt so much. And over the years, because of that, because of the amount that I walk in my job, uh, I have developed a lot of strategies to save my feet. Uh, and I think that most people, especially if you're more sedentary, you have an office job, the amount of walking you're going to do when you travel is so much more than you're used to. Uh, so just a couple of my tips, and then I'd like to hear your tips. One is in anticipation of, of going, try to start walking every day a mile, two miles, three miles, like keep ramping up. Because most people will walk 10 miles a day when you're traveling. So ramping up to get your feet ready for that, but also get really good insoles for your shoes. Be sure you mm -hmm. buy shoes that will accept good insoles. And I like either the Dr. Scholl's gel ones or the ones called super feet. And those have absolutely improved my life. What are your tips? I, for use, I use the Dr. Scholl's for women and it's the one that's in like the pinkish purplish package. Mm -hmm. So those are, I, they're, even even when I'm not traveling, they're in all of my shoes, except for my, my running shoes where I have special orthotics that go in there um, that are designed for that. But otherwise everything else, um, unless it's a like a flip-flop or an open-toed shoe or something like that, but everything else, I they've all got that. I should own stock in Dr. Scholl's. But I don't. <laughs> and then for people who are looking for sh um, kind of a sandal, you, there are sand you just really should invest in good walking sandals. I don't don't bring something you that just is okay. You need to bring something that's really good. I know a lot of people like the bionic flip flops that have the arch support. Um, I usually like to go with Echoes or something. And I will be posting a, a shoe travel shoe spreadsheet over the weekend, but just kind of thinking about that. The other thing is, what happens if you get a blister? What do you do if you get a blister? I cry. No, I mean, I the almost, I knock wood, that almost never happens anymore because like you said, I'm always breaking everything in well before I go on my yeah. trip. So that's generally a non-issue. But when that does happen, I have my, I have my little, like you, um, are, are, you have your, your box of awesome and I have a little tiny bag of, of awesome with all of these little things, band-aids, moleskin, whatever. And so I'll, I'll cut a piece of moleskin and put that on there. Or yeah. the other thing that I really like is the, um, now that only the French word is coming to me, the ampoule, but it is that kind of bandage or it'll have a barrier so that it's not really touching the blister itself, but it gives a protective cushion around it so that you're not chafing. I think they call them, pl I've only, ever, I've never bought them in the US. I think they're called plasters. Yeah, I think that's what they call them. Anyway, um, so those are really good tips. I would say for the best way to to deal with a blister is to just not get one to start yeah. with. And actually, if you have new shoes and you're worried about getting blisters, just preemptively put a big Band-Aid on the back of each of your, your heels, because that's a really good way to just make sure that doesn't happen. Um, one comment that my friend Michelle made is about compression socks. And I am a huge believer in compression socks. I had never tried them until about maybe three years ago. Absolutely love them. And I got them actually, cause I had kind of an emerging varicose vein that I wanted to keep from actually becoming a varicose vein. So I started wearing them for that reason, but holy cannoli, they actually make you feel better because mm. it keeps the blood from pooling in your feet. And I actually have fainted. I passed out on planes like three times. Really? I have incredibly low blood pressure and already, like right now I have the blood pressure of a corpse. And so when I get on a plane and the, the blood pools in my feet, I just start kind of like getting a little bit. Yeah. And I, and I have been laying in the galley with the oxygen tank on the plane Yikes. several times. <laughs> I know that about you. Yeah. I have really, really, really low blood pressure. So, um, so I wear compression socks just for that, that as it's sort of a preemptive thing to try and make sure that I don't have that problem. And boy, have they increased the quality of life 
in general because you you get off the plane feeling more rested and the other tip i would say with compression mm. socks is i wear them on museum days or you know days i know i'm going to be on my feet standing right. in one place a long time so it's if you're going to be sitting a long time or standing a long time uh, even if it's hot i would wear compression socks have you tried them i haven't but now you're inspiring me to do that so next trip i will yeah, uh, they say, that, I think the research on it is that basically when you do the compression socks, it helps the blood to return to your heart more. And especially women that have had, had kids and that are over the age of 40, we typically have a harder time get, getting blood flowing around our bodies for whatever reason. This is just what my doctor told me. She said that once you've had kids and once you're over 40, your heart just has to work a lot harder and it, the blood wants to pull more. So that's why I started wearing them because my doctor had suggested it. And man, game changer, big time. Some people wear the um, compression leggings too. Like if you really do have circulation oh. issues, you can get full full leg uh, leggings that go all the way up to your hips. And I have heard that that is magnificent for making you feel well rested when you get to your destination. Okay, I'll look for those. And then we've got a couple of people who are putting in different brands that they recommend. So thanks everybody for chiming in with all of that fun stuff. Um, what else? Oh, I know. So we were talking about souvenirs but then also what do you bring? So I, I started making earrings. I oh, told you about that, right? Yeah. And uh, because I love, when I travel, that's, that is the accessory, right? If I, if I, again, am only bringing seven tops and four bottoms or whatever it is, where I change up is what's all happening here. Yeah. And so I, but I don't like bringing heavy stuff and the stuff that I find in the stores, not necessarily my favorite. So I started designing some things they have. Those, oh, those are really are cute. a lot of fun. And then these, oh, all kinds of fun little things, just lightweight, never, you know, everybody's doing this kind of stuff, but I'm making those. And then the, the kind of unique one that I did was I took artwork that I, like photos of artwork that I found when I was traveling and I turned those into earrings. Oh, so that's, that's blub. It is blub. So it's the girl with yeah. the pearl earring. But those of you who have been to to Florence, you'll know of the artist blub. He's a street artist and he'll take a well known painting and then he basically puts them in an aquatic situation. So she the girl with the pearl earring is wearing um, scuba goggles and all kinds of stuff. And there's some Pantheon earrings that I made. Fun. Yeah. So just a little lightweight. Those are the things that I take around with me because they don't they don't weigh anything. Yeah. Well, I, I have really enjoyed discussing travel tips with you today. I would like to invite everybody who's watching this video to put into the comments your best travel tip. And I'm actually going to jump over into the Adventures with Sarah travel community and post a query there as well. I'd love for us to kind of collate our best travel tips. I've got a whole bunch of articles on my website about travel, our, my favorite travel tips, but I'd love to write a new one based on feedback from all of you guys who are watching. So just give me your one best travel. I don't want to have 20 of them from you. Everybody, what is your number one best travel tip? And I either put that in the comments here or in the post in the travel community. If you're not in the Adventures with Sarah travel community, it's just a Facebook group, kind of a closed group. So please go ahead and, and ask and I'll let you in. It's a really fun place for us to discuss travel that's outside of the bounds maybe of what I'm doing on programming here this week. So Trish, that leads me to that question. What is your number one top travel tip? Oh God, I was, uh, to be honest, I wasn't even prepared for that question. Even as you were like teeing that up, I wasn't, <laughs> I think that's pressure. I, I, the one best, I'm gonna have to come back to you on that. And it's such a cop-out because it is, it is a total cop-out. Um, all right, my, my. Uh, I'll just okay, give my you my, my number one, like best travel tip ever. I mean, it's the same one always. Don't check your luggage on the way over. That's my travel tip. Do not check your luggage out on the way over. You need to carry your luggage on always on the way over if you can. Okay. And then mine is the kind of like existential, existential travel tip is that you need to pack an open mind wherever it is that you're going to go. Keep that, keep that open mind going because you can fill it with all kinds of really, really cool things. The most amazing souvenirs and experiences that you can ever have, but that never happens if you keep that mind closed. 
That's a very good tip also. Excellent. Well, thank you so much, Trish, for joining me today with all these great travel tips uh, and lessons learned from our lives on the road. Uh, again, thank you guys for watching out there. And if you would like to post a travel tip uh, on, this con on this thread, go for it. And I'll jump over into the community in just a second and post a question over there as well. So uh, thanks so much for that. And then tomorrow, just a note on programming, we're going to be joined tomorrow uh, by you <laughs> by uh, three of my favorite or four of my favorite travelers that I've ever had as guests on my tours, single women who travel a ton and are super experienced, more experienced than I am actually in some ways. And we're going to talk about women's travel tips. And then Friday, Reed and I will be doing our uh, cocktail hour slideshow on travel skills. So thank you so much, Trish. And you can find Trish if you don't know her. I can't imagine you don't know her. But if you don't know Trish, you can find her at the travel file uh, and you should follow her on all of her socials and you can find her website at thetravelfile.com. Thank you, darling. You're a gem. Love you. Love you too. Talk to you Bye, later. Bye, everybody. Bye.